Say we have two long, infinitely long, imagine, current carrying wires separated by some distance d. Then we know that these wires are going to generate their own magnetic fields. The magnetic fields will, of course, be everywhere. But here's the thing. Current carrying wires inside a magnetic field experience a force. So this wire, second wire, will experience a force due to the magnetic field generated by the first wire. And similarly, this wire will experience a force due to the magnetic field generated by this wire, which means these two wires are going to sort of pull or push on each other. And in this video, we're gonna figure out exactly how much that force is in magnitude and direction. Yay, fun stuff. So let's start by concentrating on one of the wires. Let's figure out the force on the second wire. Let me get rid of the magnetic fields. All right, how do I calculate the force on the second wire? Well, since we are calculating force on a current carrying wire due to the magnetic field, this is the Lorentz force, and we've talked about this before. So this force will be, in terms of current, it'll be I times L cross B. And if you don't know where this is coming from, well, we've talked a lot about this in our previous videos on force on a current carrying wire inside magnetic field. So feel free to go back and check that out. So this is basically coming from the Lorentz force, Q times V cross B. All right, now before we continue, there are two currents, there are two wires, and there are two magnetic fields. So can you pause and think about which this, which is this I1 or I2, L1 or L2, and B1 or B2? Can you pause and try? That could be confusing. So pause and think clearly about this. All right. Remember, we're calculating force on the second wire, which means the current should be of the second wire. What about the length? Since you're talking about the second wire, this should be the length of the second wire. But you might say, hey, hey, Mahesh, you just said it's an infinitely long wire. So if this is infinity, force also becomes infinity. What's going on? Well, of course, if you have an infinitely long wire, then if you add up all the forces, you will get infinite force, right? Each piece is experiencing some force. So you add them all up, you get infinity. So what we can do is, instead of substituting infinity, let's keep it as L2 itself, meaning let's calculate the force on some length of this wire. Not the entire wire, let's say we're only calculating this much, this is our L2. Okay, so we're only calculating force on this much length of the wire. And let's see what to do about that a little bit later. Okay, what about the magnetic field? Is this B1 or B2? Well, it might seem like B2 because everyone, everything is two, but remember, this is experiencing a force due to the magnetic field generated by the first wire. Let me bring back the magnetic fields, remember? See, this is experiencing a force due to the magnetic field generated by this wire. So this is B1, so let me write that. So this should be B1. Okay, now let's figure out the direction of the force. What will be the direction? Well, it's in the direction of L2 cross B1, and we know how to calculate direction of the cross product. We can use our right hand for that. So L2 direction is upwards, and B1 direction is, uh, hmm, what's the direction of B1? Well, B1 is the magnetic field created by I1, this current, and how do I get that direction? Ooh, I again use my right hand rule. Oh, this is, this is so much fun, okay. So first, we can use our right hand rule to figure out what the magnetic field direction is at this point due to this current. Then we can again use our right hand to figure out what the cross product direction comes out to be. So again, can you pause the video and see what you end up with? Okay, so first let's figure out the direction of the magnetic field B1. I use my right hand thumb rule, thumb points in the direction of the current, and the encircling fingers gives me the direction of the magnetic field. And so notice the magnetic field is sort of like coming out of the screen and then goes into the screen. So everywhere to the right, it'll come out of the screen and go into the screen, and the same thing will happen over here. So magnetic field is into the screen. This is our B1. Okay, now let's do the cross product. L2 is upwards, B1 is inwards. If you didn't try this before, maybe now you can try. Okay, let's do this. So let me redraw that. So in three dimensions, L2 is upwards, B1 is into the board. I can again use my right hand and I arrange my right hand such that my palm starts with L2 and then I can cross towards B1. And this is what it looks like. Here goes. Start with L2 and then move towards B1. See? And now thumb gives me the direction of the force. So my force will be to the left, that means this wire is being pulled to the left. This is the direction of the force. 
Let's get rid of the hands now. Now let's figure out its magnitude. So if I look at just the magnitude F2, that's going to be I2 times, what's the magnitude of L cross B? It's going to be L B L B sine theta, where theta is the angle between these two. So what is, what is the angle? Well, this is upwards, L2 is upwards, B is inwards, so the angle is 90 degrees. Again, here's my awesome <laughs> drawing. You can, I mean, three dimensions, as you can see, that's 90 degrees, right? So sine 90 is one. Yay, no signs. Sine 90 is one, okay. So I know what I2 is. I know L2 is, I've taken some random length, but it's okay. But what is magnetic field B1? Hmm, do I know that? Can I calculate that? Well, yeah, because magnetic field B1 is generated by I1, and this is a long current. And hey, in previous videos, we figured out the formula for magnetic field due to long straight wire carrying current. So we can plug that in and we'll get our answer. So again, feel free to pause at any moment if you feel that you wanna try this on your own. So let me go ahead and substitute that. So F2 is going to be I2 times L2 times, what was that? B1. We got that from Ampere's circuital law, if you remember. So that would be mu zero times I by two pi R. That's what we got, if you remember. Now what is I over here? Well, this is the current that's generating the magnetic field, that's I1. And what is R? R is a distance. Is that given to us? Yeah, that's D. So this is D. So if you put it all together, the force F2 is going to be, I'm gonna put mu naught first, that's our constant. So I1 times I2 times L2 divided by two pi D. Now if I want to calculate that force, I know the value of mu naught. I1 and I2, if I know the values I can plug in. D is something that is known to me, I can plug that in. But L2 is, I don't know what that L2, what do I do with L2? Well think about it, if L2 is larger, the force will be more, of course, right? If you take a longer section of the wire, when you add up all those forces, you'll end up with more total force. So how do I represent this? I don't want L2. So you know what we like to do? We divide by L2 on both sides. So let's get rid of that L2 from this side. And the L2 would come over here. And we can just represent it this way. And we could say, hey, this is the expression for not force, but force per unit length. Think of it as an SI unit, every meter of wire if I put L2 is equal to one, then every meter of wire will experience this much force. So this is the expression, we like to represent it in terms of force per unit length. Now here's my question. What would be the direction and the magnitude of the force acting on the first wire? Well, we can redo the whole thing and I encourage you to try redoing it yourself, but there's a shortcut we can use, Newton's third law. If this wire is pulling this wire, this wire must also pull this wire. So immediately we can say that the two forces must be equal and opposite, so the force acting on this should be in this direction. And the force acting is equal and opposite. So if I take one meter of this wire and it experiences a force of, I don't know, 100 Newtons, if this is 100 for one meter, then even this one meter should experience exactly the same 100 Newtons of force, right? And therefore, immediately, just by using Newton's second law, Newton's third law, I can say this should be the same for F1 over L1. So in general, we can say if you have two long wires carrying current you know, of, at, at some distance, then the force per length on any of those wires would be so much Newtons per meters, right? This is the unit will be now Newtons per meters. Now here's a question for you. In this case, we found when both currents are going upwards, they attract each other, right? With this force per unit length. What if we change the direction of the currents? What if they're both going downwards? Or what if one was going up and one was going down? Oof, interesting cases. So I have th three other cases. What if both are going down? What if one goes down, one goes up? What if another one, this one goes up and this one goes down? In each case, can you pause and think about what would be the direction of the forces? All right, there are multiple ways to answer this question. What I like to do is just think about what happens to the signs of these. If both the currents are flipped, the magnetic fl field flips, so there'll be a negative sign over here. Think of it that way. But L2 will also flip because current is also going down. This current, I2 is also doing downward. So this will also flip. So minus into minus, 
nothing happens. So they compensate. So force direction remains the same. In this case, they will keep pull. So they'll pull each other. Same. What about this case? In this case, magnetic field becomes negative in the sense I'm opposite of this direction, but L2 stays the same. So I'll get a net negative, meaning now the force will be in the opposite direction. So this will experience a force outwards. And if this is pushing this, this will also push this, Newton's third law. And so the same thing will happen over here, they'll push each other. So what's interesting is that when the current is in the same direction, the wires attract each other with this much force per unit length. And when they are, the currents are in the opposite direction, they repel each other with this much force per unit length. Finally, before winding up, Ampere did a lot of work. He was one of the pioneers of figuring out this force law. And what was so important was that using this, we were able to define what one Ampere was. The SI unit of current was defined using this. And if you are wondering what does that even mean, we'll talk about that in future videos.